Rasulullah Radiyallahu tabarak wa ta'ala an ashabu Rasulullah al-Jum'in Wa ala alihi ya tayyibin al-tahirin wa ala tabi'ahim al-isanin ila al-abidin wa alhamdulillahi wa ala alihim Inna alhamdulillah al-lazhi khalata al-insana fi ahsani taqwim Wa afdalu salatu wa tamu taslim Ala habibi sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa shafi'ana wa qurrat a'yunina wa nura qulubina Muhammad Al-Mab'utha rahmatan lil'alamin Wa ala alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin Wa sahabati wa tabi'in Wa man tabi'ahum bi hisanin ila yawm al-deen Thumma amma ba'd Fa'udhu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim My most respected and honored Shaykh, ulama, scholars of the deen My beloved brothers and sisters, my elders I sincerely hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala envelops me and you in his mercy for we are gathered here today to remind ourselves of the importance of attaching ourselves to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best of creation, the most noblest of creation about whom the other prophets and messengers who came before him they spoke very highly of him alayhi afdalu salatu wa tamu taslim and those who have come after him have become besotted and bewildered in his love and those who follow him in righteousness up until the morning of qiyamah until the morn itself comes about of the last day they try to follow him in such a way that everything about them becomes embodied in line with his beautiful character Sayyidina al-Shaykh Sa'ad al-Addas Abdullah ta'ala an May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect and preserve him He spoke very very beautifully about the importance of understanding the mercy of Rahmatun lil'alameen Alayhi abdul salatu wa tamu taslim About trying to recognize the embodiment of mercy within his character which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed within him and how he expressed his mercy towards the creation around him. I want to remind myself and to remind you about incidents which took place when he alayhi afdalu salatu wa tamu taslim was either in Makkah al-Mukarramah or Madinah al-Munawwara physically living upon the realms of this earth. Incidents that took place which remind us about real love. What does it mean to love him alayhi afdalu salatu wa tamu taslim? Is your love as such that when you're in a gathering, then you're extremely hyped up and all you do is resemble a majnoon, someone who has lost their senses in his love? As Sayyidina Al-Habib Zain Al-Habashi, Alayhi Rahmatu Wa Ridwan, he writes, Ma dhanna majnooni layla qad junna ba'd junooni. You're not gonna understand what madness really is after you see how mad I am, madly in love I am with the one I am in love with even if you look at Layla and Majnu, you know the folk tale about those two people who are in love with one another, Layla and Majnu? <laughs> and, and, and in Pakistan, Shiri Farha, no? No? Maybe not. <laughs> Layla and Majnu and Shiri Farha and all of these people who are in love with one another but even that love, that a man fell in love with a woman and a woman fell in love with a man. They were so enveloped in that love that they could not see anything. One of the parts of the story of Majnu and Layla, when they were in love with one another, you know when she was taken away from him? And the reason I uh, remind myself and remind you about a story is not to compare it to the love of the Messenger of Allah, but to realize and make us understand what kind of kafla he was us waiting for enveloped him. And we think this is love. When Layla and Majnu were taken away from one another, when Layla was taken away from Majnu, and he was walking through the deserts, and there was a man who was worshipping, he was in Salah, and he was in prostration, and Majnu was Majnu, he was mad, madly in love, lost in love, you understand? The man was deep in the matter, you understand? And he's walking, and there's a man praying Salah, he was in prostration and Majnu walks past him, he finishes his salat and he gets up man or vex, you understand? 
And he goes up to Majnun and goes, What kind of man are you? What kind of man are you? You can see I'm praying Salah. The whole desert is open, but no. You decide to walk right in front of me. What kind of man are you? And he says, who were you worshipping? He said, Allah. He said, you're truly worshipping Allah? He says, yes. He says, do you love Allah? He says, of course I love Allah. He says, if you are truly madly in love with Allah, how did you even realize that I walked past you? How did you even realize that I walked past you? Have a muhabba in your This is love. To be in love to the extent where you don't realize anything or anyone around you. Sincerity in love. Khulus. Sid. Truthfulness in love. Let's look at some examples. Let me remind myself and remind you about those individuals who truly loved him. I lay off the salat wa ta'ala sleep. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all of them. And make us amongst those people who adopt their examples in our lives, inshaAllah. And the time. In Makkah al Mukarramah, in the early years of prophecy, when the companions, and you can find these narrations in the classical text of Sirah, Sirah al Nabawi Sharif, in the Prophet Sallallahu life, in the early years of prophecy, when he had declared his prophecy, and when the companions were worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in secret, before the open declaration happened, and they would gather in a house. And soon as dawn was about to come, they would say to one another, we need to quickly disperse before we get caught, before we get stopped, before people realize that we are congregating and worshipping Allah and have accepted the son of Abdullah as our liege lord and master. We are following his instructions. So they would get together in secret. Sayyidina Zahid bin Haris, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be well pleased with him. He was amongst those people who we all know about that he was later on, he was the freed slave of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he was taken on, adopted by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sayyidina Zahid ibn Harith. When he was adopted by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he was still involved in serving the deen in the early years of prophecy, he was amongst those people who was once stopped. And it was asked to him, where do you come from? He said, I come from one of the fellow companions' houses. Where do you go to? I go towards our Sayyid, our Master, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they said to him, have you left the religion of your forefathers as well? Because he came from the land of Persia, they used to worship fire and so on so, and so forth. And he said, whatever the son of Abdullah says to us is the truth because that man does not have the face of a liar. What he says is the truth. This was a part of the answer of a lengthy conversation that he had. Look at Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu arda. After the demise, the physical demise of our liege lord and master Salawat Rabbi Wasallam Alayhi Sayyidina Bilal al-Habashi Radiyallahu Arda when he moved to Syria and then he was invited back again to Madinah Madinatul Munawwara and people kept inviting him to give the Azan to remind them of the days when he Salawat Rabbi Wasallam Alayhi used to physically walk through the streets the companions kept on saying to him give the Azan again, give the Azan again and he would say no, I can't give it and they would ask, why can you not give the Azan? Remind us of those days when you would give the Azan and he salawat rabbi wa salam was walking amongst us. And he would say, and I cannot bring myself to do it, for if I do it, then I feel as if he is amongst us, and I know that he is not physically amongst us anymore. Until it got to the point where many of the high elderly companions, about whom it has been said in the Quran al Karim that they are the close ones and amongst the first ones, when they said to him, Ya Bilal, give the Azan. He said, okay. And he starts to give the Azan. And when he came to Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, he falls to the ground. He, fall, he bears witness that Muhammad Rasulullah, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And 
and he falls to the ground. And when he is awoken, it's asked, What happened to you? He said, I cannot finish the sentence without seeing him. And when I did not see him, I cannot contain myself. This is love. When missing him, you miss him. When you're sitting alone and you think, you know, if I sincerely was, and you know people who truly love him, when they write about him, Ali Abdul Salatu Abdul Muslim, you, you've got to understand that the things that they're writing, they're drenched in love. Drenched. And what comes, the ink that comes, is only speaking love. When that poem is written, that Naat Sharif in the Urdu language is written about him, and the writer writes, Buddh jo hota khana ka peka, tere haat se kira ho. Even if I was a statue inside the Kaaba, at least I would have fallen with your hand. It would have been your hand that touched me. Can you bring yourself to say that sincerely? That even if I was a statue inside the Kaaba, Dere Haat Sikira. Think about Sayyidina Bilal again, radiallahu anhu arda. You know when it was three or four days before he passed, his health started to deteriorate. And he started to, and then for the last three days he was completely bedridden. And when he was completely bedridden, his wife gives the narration, radiallahu anha, that I sat next to him. And I looked towards him and I started to call out, what misery, what misery. He became alert. And he looked towards me and he said, no, not misery, misery, what joy, what joy. Tomorrow, Bilal meets the beloved and the companions. Who becomes glad at the news of death? Who, do, you know, when man think of death, mm -mm. can't think anymore, stop it, stop it, stop. Don't think of death, man's got bad things to do. <laughs> and fam, man wants to do everything except think about the truth. You want to do everything but don't face reality. Ghafla. Ghafla of beloved. This is love. When he thought of death, Sayyidina Bilal, radiyallahu anhu arda, what did he think of? Let me die tomorrow and meet the beloved and the other companions. What joy, what joy. This is love. This is love. Ayyur Khullah, my respect my brethren in the deen. Look at the example of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu arda. Khalifa Rasul and the first of the Khulafa to be called Shaykhul Islam. The first to earn the title of Shaykhul Islam, the true Shaykh of Islam. Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu arda. We all hear about this narration time and time again, but do we truly understand what's happening, what's going on there? What kind of love is this? When they come back from battle and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was injured and Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu arda was injured and when he awoke from his state the first thing, you know, if you've been injured and if you faint, if you pass out and you wake up after passing out, what's the first thing you're going to think of? I'm going to think of food. I'm telling you straight. I want a, I want a fat drink of water and I want some bomb biryani. You know I ain't going to be thinking about next man's. But that's just me. But this ain't about me. This is about him, about whom it has been said of Dhabul Bashar Ba'da Dambiya. Amongst the best of creations after the Prophets. Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu When he woke up from that state, what's the first thing he asks about? How is the Prophet? What is the Prophet's state? Has he awoken? Is he okay? even more concerned about the state of the Prophet 
when his own state was in turmoil. He'd been injured, he'd been battered and bruised. His mind was all over the place, but alert was for all for the one he was in love with. In love with. My respect for brethren, think about Sayyidah Fatima al Zahra, radiallahu anha, al Batul, al Zahira, al Tahira. The leader of the women of Jannah. The narration which can be found in Sirah ibn Ishaq and Sirah ibn Kathir that when the Messenger of Allah Salawat Rabbi wa Salaam said to her, Radiallahu anha, he told her something and then she started to weep profoundly. And then a moment later he says to her something else and then she starts to laugh. She became happy. Sayyidah Umm Salma and Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqa. They say, we asked her, what was it that in a moment you changed your emotions from crying profoundly where you couldn't control yourself to laughing profoundly, becoming extremely happy? She said, at the first instance, my father, the Messenger of Allah Salawat Rabbi wa Salaam said to me, I do not have much time left on this earth. I am going to be passing on. So I started to cry, I started to weep, thinking, how am I going to live without him? So she starts to weep profoundly, radiallahu anha. Then at that moment, he smiled at me and he said, Fatima, why do you weep? You are amongst the first from my property, from my household to meet me. So I became extremely happy. Six months later, she passed on, radiallahu anha. Six months she passed on. Stop and think. If you were told you're dying soon, you're going to be dying. The average human being would not think of laughing or smiling. But these ain't average human beings we're talking about. We're talking about the best of human beings. Because they loved the best of creation sincerely. They loved him, salawat rabbi wa salam alayhi sincerely. It was that love that made her think, even at the news of being given death, she starts to smile. Think of only goodness, I'm gonna be dying, I'll be here. I'm gonna die, I'll see him. I'm gonna die, I'll be in front of him. I'm gonna die, I'll be next to him. I'm gonna die, I'm gonna be treated with those who I love. This is what they thought of. This is love. My respected brother in the deen, I think, you know, the, the, the title of this talk, SubhanAllah, is very, very interesting. But there should be an attachment to it. How can you not love the Prophet <laughs> How can you not love him, alayhi afdal salatu wa taslim? By Allah, I'm telling you, anyone who reads about him falls in love with him. Anyone who gets to know him falls in love with him. Allah, by Allah, I'm telling you. Because Allah has made him as such. Allah has made him as such. أَحْسَنُ مِنْكَ لَمْ تَرَقَبْتُ عَيْنِي وَأَجْمَلَ مِنْكَ لَمْ تَلِدِ النِّسَاءُ خُلِقْتَ مُبَرَّأَ مِنْ كُلِّ عَيْبٍ كَأَنَّكَ قَدْ خُلِقْتَ كَمَا تَشَاءُ Allah has said this in the name of Allah. When he said this poetry about him, this is love. No eye has seen anyone like you. No woman has given birth to a man like you. Created free from all elements. Born as if according to his own will. <laughs> He's saying this. A companion says this. Overpraising him? Was this companion overpraising him? And he said, you're born as if according to your own will. Aji, think sincerely, ayyuhu khullam. If you're in love with him, as Imam Muhammad Raza Khan, sallallahu alayhi wa rahmatullahi he says, this is love. Sarwar kahun ke maaliko maula kahun tujhe. Sarwar kahun, maaliko maula kahun tujhe. What shall I call you? Shall I call you my representative? Shall I call you my master? What shall I call you? This is love. 
سرور کا ہوں کہ مالک و مولا کا ہوں تجھے باغ خلیل کا بل سے ایبا کا ہوں تجھے شل آئی ہول یو فرام امنگس دا فلاورز آف سیدنا ابراہیم علیہ السلام گاڈ دیٹ یو فیل ان ٹو وٹ شو آئی ہول یو دس از لو ویر ایون ورڈز فیل ٹو ڈسکرائب ہیم ایز سیدنا امام جامی سیڈ that when we write about him alayhi afdhu salatu wa tam taslim then our poetry does not become praiseworthy because of the words the words become praiseworthy because we're writing about him this is love when people who sincerely love him the moment they think of the green dog wallah tranquility starts to descend upon them mercy starts to descend upon them Who wants to get rid of the green doll? The moment you think of anything associated with him, anything that reminds you of him, you fall in love with that itself. How is it going to be when you're in front of him? How? Think of that moment. Think of that moment when you're lying in your grave and he finally comes. He comes, you see him, and then the angels ask you, What did you have to say about this man? In the right of the, what did you have to say? Are you going to be able to contain yourself? A true lover would be in such a state as the true lovers have said. When we see him in our grave, don't frighten us with the news of death. Give us glad tidings of death. For when we see him in our grave, that will be the best part of our lives, even after death. This is what the true lovers have said. My respected brethren in the deen, if you sincerely want to increase your love of him, alayhi of the salat wa ta'am taslim, get to know him. Wallahi, get close to him, get to know him. And if you, the more you get to know him, the closer to Allah you get. The more you get to know him, the more you love him. The more you love him, the firmer your faith becomes. La yu'minu ahadukum hatta akuna ahabba ilayhi mi walidhi wa waladhi wa nasi ajma'in. None can attain belief. Attain belief unless they love me more than their parents, their children, and the rest of mankind. Let's take it upon ourselves today, inshallah. Say, inshallah, you will all do this. Say, inshallah. Every single day, 500 salawat on the messenger. Say, inshallah. And it ain't hard for those of you thinking, mm -mm, Man can't do five, he's talking about 500. <laughs> Sisters, if you're thinking, you know what, I've got so much to do, so much coursework to do, blah, blah, blah. Listen, if you want success in your life, if you want to pass those exams, if you want that coursework to be accepted, if you want to pass that interview, your whole life, send salawat upon him. Send salawat upon him and through the blessing of salawat, Allah will make your life easy for you. And even if you're faced with trials and tribulations in your life, send salawat upon him. Allah will give you the forbearance to accept that challenge that Allah places in your life. Allah will make you amongst those who have patience. Salawat in his presence. And it ain't hard. It's not hard. After every salah, 100 salawat. 100 salawat. Okay? If you find it difficult, to say Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa sallim wa salli alayhi all the salawat of Sayyidina Ibrahim okay Allahumma salli wa alayhi Allahumma salli wa alayhi Allahumma salli wa alayhi say Allahumma salli wa alayhi Subhanallah look how many blessings have just come down Subhanallah look how many blessings Subhanallah is raining blessings is raining do you want that in your life do you want that love of his in your life sincerely send blessings upon him 500 every single day and according to a narration which can be found in Talal al-Khairat compiled by Imam al-Juzuli a person who sends 500 salawat upon the messenger salawat Rabbi wa salam alayhi his intercession becomes wajib for that individual Allah. on the day of Qiyamah he will intercede for you you will be close to him standing like this as he salawat Rabbi wa salam alayhi himself has said I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes me and you truly sincere to the messenger salawat Rabbi wa salam alayhi aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah لي ولكم ونسائي المؤمنين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته